we got to talk about Mark Adams. Uh, a report from stadiums and field of 68's Jeff Goodman over the weekend. Uh, Mark Adams reference to a player how everybody has a everyone's a servant and a master, right? When he was uh, quoting scripture, and also may or may not have uh, spit on a player. So there's a lot to get into with this. There's a lot to talk about with this. Uh, Fanta, I'll go to you first on this one since you guys kind of discussed it last night. Where do you stand on Mark Adams? How do you feel about this entire situation? And uh, <laughs> he's suspended for the conference tournament. Texas Tech has it all to play for right now. What what, what are we what are we doing here? Well, there's two separate incidents here, Rob and, and T.O., and happy championship week to you guys. So the first one with the, the Bible scripture passage, when you read that and, and you read about the master and the servant, there, there's obviously a natural uh, discrepancy, and, and it produces about 10 questions that I have about, about this particular passage and what actually happened. But okay, so then you're reading the story, and then you see that he allegedly uh, may have spit on a player. If that happened, if Mark Adams spit on a player, he should not coach again. If he if he in fact did that, you cannot spit on people. Yeah. For the record, what I what I guess happened is not like he. he I don't think he went oh, like that, right? I think what happened is. Um, in the process of talking and yelling during a game, uh, he said a P, said a T, something happened where he spit when he was talking. And instead of being like, oh, shit, my bad, I, like that was that was my mistake as someone is wiping something off of their face, which is I probably happened to a lot of us before, right? Um, he said, I can spit. The, what was alleged is that he said, I can spit on you when I want, which is just. That's where the issue is. That's right? the issue, right? You cannot, you can't say that. Come on. Mark, you can't be an asshole. Don't say that. Um, as far as the scripture thing is concerned, like I'll tell you this, Fanta, and you guys tell me what you think about it. I I'm not I'm not religious. I'm not here. I'm not, I'm not out here quoting the Bible, right? But if you're saying something as an old white man in a position of power with a bunch of young black men, right, and you refer to someone's got to be a master and someone's got to be a servant, well, however, whatever the quote actually is, I don't know what it actually is. Um, that works if you have a good relationship with your players, right? It doesn't work if you don't have a good relationship. And it's not something that you can say if there is some kind of uh, tension in there. And I think the one thing that we've learned about Texas Tech this year, right? There's tension within that locker room. It's also just the nature of response. He was unapologetic. He said that he didn't apologize to his players. When you're unapologetic, it, you do something that that's questionable, and then you're not willing to to step across and and say, you know what, I'm sorry if it came off that way. Here's what I really meant. It would have been better that way. It would have been better that way. Instead, he said, "Well, I talked to them about it, but I didn't apologize for it." Mark, come on. Mm -hmm. That that was my takeaway from from the article was the the quotes about stuff and you know Adam saying, "I don't recall ever saying that that I could spit on you whenever I want." So now it's a he said, she said game. And the university's taking it up. The fact is, Texas Tech doesn't want these headaches. Their, their administration is not going to want these headaches. And is Mark Adams really worth keeping around with these types of headaches and with these types of things? And if any of these things you know, came close to – if he said, I could spit on you whenever I want or I, I could do – like that was my takeaway from this was – the incidents themselves are subjected to debate. What, where I have a problem, T.O., is the whole tone of his messaging of, I didn't apologize to them, or you know, I don't recall saying that. That, to me, comes off as I'm on this pedestal, and and the players are here, and you know I, th this is my word, and I'm right on this. I, I, just, I thought that all the discourse from Adams himself was not a good look. For the head coach at Texas Tech additionally. I want to preface what I'm about to say with the fact that I grew up. My my grandfather was a Southern Baptist minister. My uncle's a deacon at his Southern Baptist church. Um I don't share a lot of beliefs with with, with certain things, but what, what I do find that really irritates me is guys, we're, we're privy to a lot of information that we're obviously not going to make public. 
But when a person uses the scripture as a crutch, it really irritates me. That's what's happening here. This is not a person who is living a certain way that can just go on and recite scripture and use it as a crutch and then not have to have the ability to tr backtrack. This is a person who's had his fair share of things happen. So that irritates me. Secondly, the, the, I don't think the people of Texas tech are all that happy with Mark Adams anyway. I think that's a big portion of it. Um, and by the way, man, like I, he, he had me fooled up until the final four last year. He had me fooled. This guy is, is a different bird. And what I will say about the whole spitting thing, guys, I've been sped on by coaches, but it's never been to a point to where it's like, <laughs> and just spit on a guy. It, it's guys get emotional. Mm -hmm. They're, they're juicy mouthed is what, uh, Jamie Foxx used to say. When you get a little extra spit on your lip and you're just sitting there, to look at it and it just flies out and it just happens to get on you. That shit happens. Mm -hmm. But like, um, I, I, you can't go back and be like, I can spit on you if I want. Are you kidding me? There's, there's that, gotta be a level like, of respect like that. To me, that's, that's the, that's the biggest problem here is it's very, like, if you're saying that to a player, then I don't think that I think it's to me, it's pretty clear that you don't respect that player. If you can say I can spit on you when I want. Right. And also for the record, when you say, I don't recall saying that you recall saying that you recall saying that exactly. And that was the other thing when he, when he said, I'm not apologizing. It's like, when you well, do he's not apologize. He's not apologizing because he's using. He, he's saying that he's using scripture, so he's not going to apologize for scripture. But the problem is, is if you don't have that relationship and you don't really mm -hmm. know that player that you're talking to, if they share the same religious beliefs as you do, you can't just pull that out of nowhere and just use scripture to a kid that may be atheist or yep. a kid that may have grown up in a situation where. I, I don't know. Like maybe he's of especially Muslim when there's faith. maybe he's when, a, when there's the dynamic. Faith, like yeah, especially that, when you but. have the dynamic of like a an old white coach. Hey guys, just a reminder: our sponsor for today's episode is Run Your Pool. They are hosting the Field of Sixty Eight Bracket Challenge this year. They are giving away fifteen hundred dollars in free prizes. It's all an incentive for you to get on there and find out just how good their platform is. I've been using them for my bracket pools for years. I've used them for Super Bowl squares. I use them for everything that I need to use them for. The biggest survivor pool that I'm in for both NFL and NCAA tournament is by Run Your Pool. So go check them out. The links below. Tap in a young black player that maybe doesn't understand like what he's trying to say when he says master and a servant. Cause if you've never read the Bible and you don't know what it says in there and yeah, you just hey, hear Mark. The, yeah. yeah hey, hey Mark, put your Bible away. All right. Throw it out the window. You, you, you potentially spin on a player and then you said that you don't remember saying that nice, real nice there. We're way, have... to use the, way to use the Bible. Happy Lent, Mark. Don't please. <laughs> Fanta, don't, don't throw me. your Bible out the window. Yeah, don't but, throw your but, Bible out the window, like, please, Fanta. We get what you're saying. Maybe he, maybe he should, maybe he should read the Bible a little bit more on how he should approach people. Mm -hmm. Like this is, this is, uh, this is a guy that I, I would be shocked to see him coaching all that much longer at te Texas. Mark, State. Mark's the guy who goes to church every Sunday and then lets everybody know about it. Mm -hmm. All right, I think that's enough on that. I. Uh, I, I echo your sentiment to and I don't know how much longer he'll end up um, being there. There's uh, the thing what bothers me more the most about coaches um, is when they treat players poorly, right? Like I just, I can't, that really bothers me. Just be, you, but, but you don't have to be like, you don't have to be a, the kind of coach like that just how doesn't about, How about Mark Adams just be around? How about he be around his players a little bit more? Yeah, but, but saying too much. How about Mark Adams like, just be but, around? Mm -hmm. But like, here's the thing: the Bible passes to me. That's not cause to get fired. That that whole thing's not cause to get fired. Okay, the Bible thing to me is not very important. Like, I, I sorry to sorry if I sound like I'm being insensitive, but like Greg McDermott made racially uh, insensitive comments to his players uh, about a plantation, and Greg McDermott's coaching crate. Okay, he he's he's still coaching there. He apologized. Um, he said he was sorry. He he got suspended. Life moved on. The, the the Bible thing. That's that wasn't my main takeaway. My eyes got huge when I read spit on a player. 
and then say he doesn't remember saying those things? Come on, man. Mm -hmm. Come on. And, and here's the other thing, Rob. If it was just a P or a T, and I'm with you on that, all that, like if it was just something that simple, where are Mark Adams players right now on social media giving him some support? I have that's, seen that's the that. thing. Like it's I see none of that. This it goes to a, a bigger issue of of a level of respect. Like if you if he had that relationship with his players where they they were gonna run through a wall for him, right? This is why you never see like how often do you see players get on social media or go to the media or go to the press about Frank Martin or about Bob Huggins. Or about like Dan Hurley, about guys that will coach you as hard as you can possibly be coached. Those guys aren't afraid to cuss you out, right? Frank Martin is going to push you as hard as anybody can push you to be the better, the best human being you can be, right? But he he can do that because he's able to show these guys that he truly does love them and care about them and want them to be better. And as soon as you get out of that practice gym, then it's like you have a relationship with a mentor. He's going to do everything that he can to help you, right? Same thing with Bob Huggins. Same thing with a lot of these guys. Brad Underwood, I think, is probably another guy that falls into that category. There's lots of guys that will coach you really, really hard, that will prove the way that they like, prove how much they care about you outside of just the basketball gym, which is why they can get on you as hard as they get on you in the basketball gym. And I don't think that that's happening with, with Texas Tech and Mark Adams in this situation. And, and honestly, like, He's a guy that came up as a JUCO coach in West Texas. Like that might just be what he knows, and that's not to that's not to sit here and like justify it or defend him. But I don't I don't think that that works in 2023, and I don't think that it works when you're coaching a Big 12 caliber team. And frankly, we'll talk about this in a little bit. With him not there, you have a roster with top 25 talent there. Just keep an eye on them in Kansas City this weekend.